This video provides the end user with a high level overview of the process of designing configurations in the Atomic Automation solution. This activity consists mainly in creating, maintaining, and testing executable objects like jobs and workflows, as well as active but non-executable objects like calendars. We show how to use the process assembly perspective to design and update these objects and touch on the subject of the process monitoring perspective for supervision and status. We show how to add the objects we access most often to our favorites and user catalog. We explain the most common objects that serve as the prominent component parts of a basic automation configuration. These include folders, jobs, file transfers, workflows, calendars, and schedules. There are of course many other object types, but for the most part they provide extra functional capability to these six main ones. Jobs are the basic building block of automation. They are agent-specific job definitions. A job issues an instruction, like a script or a command, to execute a process. It is assigned to an agent and has a login to authenticate with the system or application. The file transfer allows automated agent-to-agent -agent file transfer processes without an FTP server. The workflow provides the bulk of synchronization capabilities. Jobs and other objects are added and linked in logical execution sequences. The core synchronization capability of the workflow involves placing objects in the workflow and linking them with a line to define dependencies. The schedule object automates the defined objects like jobs and workflows using specific cycles based on days. Executions can be authorized or withheld with the use of a calendar. Calendars contain calendar events which provide authorization masks allowing or preventing the execution of objects based on explicit dates, cycles, days of the week, days of the month, holidays, and so forth. They apply to both workflows and schedules. Initial design work starts with the process assembly perspective. Let's open it. Once in the perspective, we notice two functions in the toolbar. The first is the Add Folder button. For each object type, we recommend creating a folder to keep the environment organized. We see the existing folders in the menu on the left, one for each object type. The other is the Add Object function, which we use to create a new object. Let's create a folder, say for event type objects, then we'll access another folder and create an object. You notice that every object type has a short name, job S for jobs, EVNT for events, and so forth. This short name is used in all object names at the beginning. We recommend enforcing this naming convention. It makes it easier to classify objects. Adding titles to object is a really good idea. It allows you to enter an exact description of your object and make it instantly more recognizable when used elsewhere, like jobs and workflows. When an object is selected and highlighted in yellow, three functions activate in the toolbar. They are Open, Delete, and Execute if the object is executable. An object is structured in pages, each containing important properties for the object. These properties are configurable on the right. One of the pages common to all objects is version control, which by default is not enabled, but can be activated by the administrator. Every modification to the object generates a new version, stored separately in the repository, and is now available to easily refer and revert back to if required. Objects can contain docu-objects, which allow designers to document their work and append notes. The Edit button allows you to prevent further updates to the object, making it read-only and preserving its integrity while it's open. 
modifications can be saved, and the object can be executed directly while open. Built into the interface is a ubiquitous back button. You'll often see these prompts for confirmation. They can be temporarily disabled. Some can even be permanently disabled by the administrator. Note that you will always be prompted when trying to delete an object in use somewhere else, say a job in a workflow. Also, objects cannot be deleted while they're active, meaning still under supervision in the process monitoring tools. This is a workflow which uses a number of objects executing in a certain sequence. Objects added to a workflow are known as tasks. This is a schedule. The schedule automates the execution of every object which has been added to this list. They might be jobs, workflows, file transfers, and more. Each object added to the schedule is a task. A schedule task can have a calendar condition. This calendar has an event which can allow or prevent executions of the task based on the condition type. Without the calendar condition, the task would presumably execute according to the schedule cycle. However, this particular task will only execute on Saturdays. An executable object can be executed immediately by simply clicking on the button. However, there are other execution options. It's possible to execute once and modify certain specs of the execution or add a cyclical period for the execution, in effect automating the execution without a schedule. You can also restart, say after a failure. The Execute Once option provides a number of extra capabilities, like icing the execution until it is released by hand, changing the queue, or further adding testing options. The workflow is submitted for execution, we start the process monitoring perspective to supervise it. This is our executing workflow. It has a green active status and a run ID. We can expand the workflow to supervise each component object of the workflow. The refresh function is a useful one. By default, refresh is automated every 90 seconds, although this can be configured by the administrator with the usual impacts on performance. We have the option of refreshing manually. When we do so, we notice the status of our objects change as some completes while others start. Notice the request. This is the system's way of interacting with a current end user. In this case, we're being notified that an activation report with a run ID has been generated, telling us how the execution was initiated. Every execution generates two important supervision functions. The first is the report. In the case of a job, the report is a formatted document containing standard output and error. In the case of a workflow, the last monitor shows the workflow executing in real time with matching statuses for each object. If the workflow is completed, it will show it as well. Objects all have a context menu in which the toolbar functions are found along with a few more. If there are objects that you access or execute frequently, you can add them to your favorites. This also adds them to your user catalog.
let's start the My Catalog perspective, which is a perspective that caters specifically to your needs as a user. Your catalog provides a quick view of your current active objects, as well as a history log of everything else. Notice the objects we added to our favorites. Let's return to the home perspective. The home perspective can be configured with various dashboards and widgets. Dashboards are custom UI configurations, and each can contain any number of widgets, which are windows into specific areas of your data. Let's add the catalog. For this, we simply hover on one of the free spaces in the home dashboard.